My name is Dr. Elena Klemenko. I'm a functional medicine physician uh, with a background in internal medicine. And functional medicine is my passion. This is how I like to practice medicine to help my patients to reach optimal health and get to the root cause of medical issues. And today we're going to talk about a very common problem, fatigue and burnout. Um, this is our uh, traditional um, get together for live Q&A and discuss a specific topic. So today we're talking about fatigue. So we, this is the agenda for our presentation. We're going to talk about what is fatigue, what type of fatigue, because believe it or not, uh, fatigue means different things to different people. How can it ma manifest? What are the predominant symptoms of fatigue? Uh, what are the treatment options from conventional medicine all the way to the functional medicine? And I'll say a few words about our SOS stress recovery program that we practice in this in, in our clinic. So what is the fatigue? So fatigue is the feeling of tiredness, low energy, and drowsiness. And it's actually a normal physiological reaction. Uh, sometimes we can present with their physical or mental uh, fatigue after specific activities. You, someone ran marathon, they're going to be obviously very tired physically. Someone prepared for the exam, they're going to be tired mentally. But then after a proper rest, that fatigue should be gone, right? So for their physical fatigue, it's obviously short-term inability of the muscle to maintain optimal physical uh, performance. If you work out in the gym and you're doing a high weight lifting, you know you need to rest because otherwise you cannot do the same weight lift. Or again, short term in mental fatigue, the short term decrease in cognitive performance will be a manifestation of mental fatigue. And that should be all resolved with proper rest. Now, this is there just some of the simples or simple examples and explanation. Um, how does the physical fatigue present? It will present with a gradual onset, and it depends obviously on the level of fitness. Uh, someone who is a couch potato and decides to go and do, uh, you know, five miles run will be a really in the bad shape next day. Uh, also, it's, if we uh, our physical level of fatigue will increase if we're not sleeping properly and if our overall health is not uh, optimal. So what is causing it? It's causing the lack of energy production by mitochondria usually in the muscle. And it also can be due to their lack of stimul stimulation from the nerve to the muscle. So there, there's no stimulation from the nerve to the muscle. Muscle cannot contract. That creates weakness in a specific uh, part of the body or uh, a group of muscles. So, um, this is important to understand, uh, and it will help us to differentiate the type of physical fatigue, because sometimes it could be isolated to a certain group of muscles, or it could be generalized fatigue. Mental fatigue could be also gradual uh, onset, and it depends on the cognitive ability, sleep deprivation, and overall health. And it also de decreases the physical performance because when we are mentally tired, we might not be able to go to the gym and we don't want to. Everything is a drag. So we, some of us are familiar with that when we are exhausted. So it's also characterized of the just general sensation of tiredness, lack of energy, de decrease of uh, ability to concentrate, disengagement. So everything is a drag, everything, every little task is a chore. This, this actually creates um, difficulty to, with executive function sometimes. It could be all part of their mental fatigue. So as I said, there are some different types of fatigue. The normal fatigue that we can all experience as a result of work, mental stress, and over and under stimulation all of that is normal, but it doesn't mean you have to sit at home and suffer through it. In our clinic, we actually can help people to recover from even uh, average um, mental and working stress. It will. We have a variety of different protocols to help people to recover from physical and mental stresses that are normal.
or jet lag is a good example. Everybody who experienced jet lag know that they will be will be tired, right? If some physical activity, like a difficult workout, we do a variety of things to help people to recover quicker. Or even boredom, that can be normal, but something you can do about it. And of course, lack of sleep. We had a whole webinar about the importance of sleep and how to uh, help people to sleep better and deeper. So now it could be also acute fatigue, things like dehydration, this sudden onset of the fatigue. People were fine and all of a sudden, uh, especially in the summertime, especially in the elderly, dehydration can create this symptoms of acute uh, lack of energy. Or many of us experience low blood sugar when we experiencing so-called hypoglycemia, symptoms of sudden onset of their uh, fatigue, or lack of minerals and deficiency of their vitamins it could be also present as acute fatigue. Many of us experience fat acute fatigue during the viral infection. If you experienced COVID or or flu or any other viral infections, common cold, we know the associated viral acute fatigue. Sometimes acute fatigue can present even after emotional stress or with uh, mental emotional illnesses like depression, that fluctuation in energy um, and acute uh, tiredness. We also differentiate beside acute fatigue, also prolonged fatigue. That one, it will last for about a month or longer. And the chronic fatigue, which is actually a separate diagnostic entity in the conventional uh, medicine, is the fatigue that lasts more than six consecutive months. And it can be either continuous or it could be relapsing. So people say, oh, I feel better, but then two days later, I feel worse again. So chronic fatigue, the one that lasts for more than six months, Cannot, can, cannot be just explained by other physiological or medical conditions. So it's more of a diagnosis of, of uh, exclusion, of the proper testing that look for other reasons of fatigue, for example, chronic iron deficiency or anemia, right? L lack of blood, red blood cells, or uh, other types of uh, mineral or nutrient deficiency like vitamin D can be also related to uh, fatigue. This is not what we're talking in the chronic fatigue. So chronic fatigue will be, uh, is usually difficult to diagnose with the laboratory testing. And it's usually related as a component of this chronic fatigue, we'll see the adrenal fatigue or adrenal deficiency when the cortisol level is not supporting our, our daily um, demand or that help us to adapt to every changing environment. So that usually involves um, hypo, uh, hypothalamic pituitary axis, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So I don't know if you knew, but 2.5 million of Americans suffer from the chronic fatigue syndrome and symptoms. And I think this number is increasing, especially post COVID pandemic, because a lot of people started developing uh, fatigue after uh, their acute virus and uh, also after uh, vaccinations. So we see it over and over and now more and more. So what are the causes of fatigue? Obviously, it's a very multifactorial problem. And there, it takes some time, some time to uh, figure out what is the cause of the fatigue in the particular individual. But uh, believe it or not, sometimes low blood pressure can be, um, can be a cause of the fatigue. Uh, I hope everyone here on the call was able to have a blood pressure measured on a regular basis. So make sure if you're experiencing symptoms of fatigue, your blood pressure is actually not below a uh, normal range. Nutritional deficiency is one of the most common components of the fatigue. It might be not the sole reason for that, but sometimes people improve just from uh, compensation of their B vitamins in, the, in their blood. So if we if they come for the uh, IV therapy in our clinic, 
even after one IV session, people spruce up and they feel significantly better. Sometimes it's just the lack of antioxidants, lack of nutrients. So your uh, powerhouse mitochondria or our organelles that produce energy for our body need to produce more of that. Viral infections are very common. Chronic or even acute viral infections will be uh, a big part of the chronic fatigue syndrome. COVID, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, uh, human herpes virus 6, those are the very common, and sometimes they could be one of the components for, uh, to for people to develop our chronic fatigue. Uh, poor immune system response, uh, obviously when the immune system cannot clear off some of the bacteria or viruses and they become chronic, that's another reason for uh, development of the fatigue. Of course, hormonal imbalances for male and female, female in, specifically in the perimenopausal age, but for male also around uh, their, uh, uh, you know, their male pause that we call when the testosterone start declining. And that can happen, depends on the, the individual anywhere from uh, 30s, late 30s or um, 50s. So that's very common as well. And of course, we're human. We allow to have a combination of all those factors to contribute to our energy production in the body. So other, um, other reasons for fatigue is, of course, uh, our gut health. So gastrointestinal issues that can involve simple dysbiosis, but also maybe um, a parasite infection that actually drains us from nutrients, inflammatory changes in the body related to autoimmune disorders or um, uh, inflammation in the joints, underlying infections like mold. We see more and more tick-borne illness infections that contribute to um, presentation of chronic medical illnesses, as well as fatigue, uh, chronic yeast infections, and don't forget about environmental exposure. We live in the toxic soup of their urban area, but more and more even in their, um, uh, for people who live in their, in their uh, rural area uh, with exposure to polluted water, polluted air, uh, polluted grounds with their glyphosates and uh, herbicides and insecticides that are contributing to our allopathic or environmental toxic load. And some people genetically predisposed to a lower threshold of, of uh, uh, tolerance. Uh, so they're energetically just weaker. Their terrain uh, and their constitution is the weaker constitution. Interestingly, in Chinese medicine, it's considered the children that are born from older parents have a lower um, uh, lower jing, they call it, so, or, or storage of energy that they can operate through. So it's good to know in, our, in, in my evaluation, I always often ask how old were your parents when they had you. So that could be also a very important factor. So younger parents, healthier children. And of course, Many of you on the call know about the powerhouse of our body. This is our mitochondria. Mitochondria is the organelles inside of every cell in our body that produces their energy currency, which is ATP, adenosyl triphosphate, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So with age, uh, our mitochondria's numbers are declined. But with other factors and our, uh, other lifestyle modification, we can actually increase our mitochondrial numbers. So generally, healthier the person is, more mitochondria they may have, and, and faster and more uh, robustly they can regenerate mitochondria. And uh, as a result, we produce much more energy. But with age, with stress, with toxic exposure, with the negative lifestyle factors, and with the poor nutrition and lack of nutrients that mitochondria need, we will decrease the efficiency of the mitochondria. As a result, we'll increase the oxidative stress within the uh, mitochondria, and they will start just dying, unfortunately. And as a result, we'll produce more free radicals, we'll reduce oxidative phosphorylation, 
will reduce the ATP production, will create more damage to mitochondria and increase this oxidative stress, um, increase the protein damage, and this will create the dysfunction of mitochondrial membranes, decrease the ATP synthesis, and unfortunately, our mitochondria become less and less efficient. Um, so this is just explanation of what's going on in their uh, neurological level, neuroendocrine level, when, uh, when our brain perceives the stress, how does it react to the stress, right? Either internal or external stress, um, our brain starts sending the signal. It's like our um, telephone communication or telephone cord that sends the signal to our um, karate, uh, uh, to our, um, uh, to our um, adrenal glands that are uh, triangular shaped glands that you can see on the right and on the left side. And the adrenal glands will produce uh, mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, some of the hormones uh, and precursors of the hormones like DHEA that will convert eventually to testosterone. So all of those are very, very important. And adrenals will get the message from the brain. So more stress we perceive, more stimulation the brain will send from the pituitary gland to the adrenal cortex to produce cortisol. And that's a stress hormone um, that is responding to that stimulation. But it also helps us to adapt to any ever-changing environment and to the stress, of course, it also supports our immune system and controls the level of inflammation. So all of that is really, really important. On the left side of this, uh, of this slide, you can see another part of the adrenals that is really, really important that is more of an internal, internal part of the adrenals or adrenal medulla that produces another very important hormone. Fancy word for that is catecholamines. Catecholamines, uh, with their medical term uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, in our colloquial language, we know it as adrenaline and noradrenaline. So those are the also very important uh, mediators, and they will be responsible for energy production in the body. So if people don't have enough of that stimulation from the brain to their uh, adrenals, they will not produce a very important uh, uh, hormones to generate the energy for us. So this is important. So, and then eventually more and more we talk about the burnout, right? The burnout is could be a type of the fatigue, but it's more related to work and daily uh, life activity. Could be burnout from job, burnout from uh, home chores, could be burnout from uh, from other factors. So it could be most mostly we see I see it in my practice is the work related stress uh, that exhibited exhibiting in the following signs like feeling of energy depletion and exhaustion, sense of reduced accomplishment, inability to focus on the task or complete the task. Now the same task takes you double time uh, what it used to be, right? Feeling negative uh, negativity related to someone's job. That's another very important marker of the burnout. And then also increase of mental distance from one's job. When you wake up in the morning and you don't want to go to job, that might be a, a beginning of the burnout. And the reduction of the professional fish efficacy, as I mentioned. So the possible ca causes of the burnout, and we see it more and more now, especially post-COVID, because a lot of people are doing the job of two or three people. Uh, the, the causes of it is a lack of control. You work for a company that really doesn't consider you as an important asset, and they over, uh, over uh, burden you with their amount of work, uh, or... Uh, there's lack of leadership and there's lack of expectations at job. 
uh, dysfunctional workplace dynamics. So not good communication between, uh, you know, par parallel and the vertical um, uh, chains of their of the ladder. Extremity of activities that I mentioned already. So people running the job of two, three people is so un so common now that I see people come here. And I think since their COVID, I filled out so many applications for disability that it's becoming really strange how many people, and it's young people, um, cannot work anymore because they just in this burnout and fatigue state. So it's it's very important. I think it's a, a very timely uh, topic for us to discuss because the amount of people who are dragging going to work is really uh, uh, increasing at this point. And lack of social support. Uh, so some companies may be not providing the necessary support or lack of support at home or from the community or just loneliness. People might not have a supportive group and community to help them to go through that. And uh, some we we Americans is their uh, nation of uh, workaholics, right? So not many people uh, have life outside of work, which is unfortunately very common. Uh, not like in other parts of the world where work is just work, and two thirds of the life actually preoccupied with hobbies, family, friends, social interactions, and job is that uh, eight hours a day we unfortunately don't have that. So that lack of the work-life imbalance. So the consequences of this would be really perce perceiving more and more stress and fatigue. People stop sleeping. People feel irritable, angry, sad, depressed. People start using more of their stimulating or calming substances like alcohol and stop substance misuse increase of the pain actually one of the consequences not mentioned here but that's what triggers people to go to the doctors and ask for the medications for pain that leads to the problem of the opioid overuse and on and on and on right but that also leads to their high blood pressure because of the stress um heart disease type 2 diabetes and vulnerability to the illnesses, any illnesses, not necessarily just cold and flu. So how do we know that, how do you know if this is you and you feel a combination of the previously mentioned signs and the following, uh, and, and the following. So exhaustion for more than 24 hours after physical and mental exercise could be a sign of that. Not feeling refreshed after sleeping, having trouble sleeping, or difficulty with concentration, attention, memory, maybe feeling dizzy or faint when standing from the seated position, this orthostatic, orthostatic symptoms. Again, muscle and aches and pains, joint pains, headaches, frequent sore throats, all of those things can be a sign of burnout. And even tender lymph nodes in the neck and the underarms. So just body is just shutting down or sending you signals that I am not well, you need to take care of me. Something is not working as well as it used to. So, and of course, when you go to a primary care doctor, they will do the test, right? They will do the exam. They probably will do their regular blood test. But in functional medicine, we really do go a little bit deeper. We look at their, beside the regular markers of, uh, a complete blood count and metabolic panel and thyroid, we really like to go a little step deeper to evaluate what is going on. So, for example, we are looking at the thyroid function. A lot of people who are who have thyroid issues know how um, how how it affects the energy. So we're looking at the thyroid antibodies. Is there any signs of uh, autoimmunity? or inflammation? Are there any ANA markers or food sensitivity? Sometimes we uh, address the food sensitivity and people feel better. Organic acid test is the great test to look at the mitochondrial function and see what is going on really inside of the cell because we're looking for metabolites 
of their uh, mitochondrial cycle. We look at the stool test, looking for some um, parasites or signs of uh, imbalance of their bacteria that can contribute to the uh, development of the fatigue and low resilience to stress. And the treatment option, obviously, in conventional medicine, they might interpret the, your fatigue as depression or your burnout as depression. So here's the prescription medication. Some good doctors probably will prescribe cognitive behavioral therapy that is really important for us to resolve their deep underlying emotional issues that lead us to the present place of burnout. And uh, this, is, this is actually a very good practice, I would say, but a lot of people don't even consider the behavioral therapy. And um, general diet uh, and ex ex exercise advice, probably not a part of their conventional medicine, but we definitely talk about it a lot in, uh, in, our, in our evaluation and the treatment plan. So in functional medicine treatment, uh, we start very deep. We discuss the lifestyle. We talk about how people sleep, what their relationship is to their uh, who is their uh, nearest circle of support? Uh, how is their dynamic at home, uh, dynamic in work? Is it contributing to the stress or is it actually a place of joy and, and, and a place of uh, positive emotions and feeling of accomplishment? So we're looking at their key stressors that can affect body's ability to produce energy blood sugar, mental emotional stress, inflammation, sleep disruption, all those things are really, really important. I'm so sorry about the um, sirens in New York. You can't just get rid of it. So, and then we like to support our uh, energy production with the supplements. So nutritional deficiencies that we need to address and we do amazing nutritional evaluation by drawing the blood and looking at more than 50 different markers, intracellular and extracellular uh, nutrients, everything from minerals to vitamins and fatty acids. We're looking at the uh, supporting mitochondrial function by providing all necessary uh, nutrients. We uh, also utilize a lot of herbal adaptogenic herbs that support our cortisol and our adrenals to do a better job. And we also like to look at the neurotransmitters, something that is not available in conventional medicine. So we do a simple urine test that looks at all key neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, GABA. We look at how people, do they have enough stimulation from the endocrine system? Uh, and do they have enough neurotransmitters and to calm themselves down so they can have a restful sleep? So all of the array of different factors we like to um, evaluate. This is like a basic case, a uh, very common case when the woman, middle-aged woman usually comes uh, complaining of the fatigue, right? She is a, a full-time, she has a full-time job. She's a VP at the bank. That's the case from my practice, Jenny. So she has this unrelated fatigue. And she went to her primary care doctor. They checked her thyroid. Thyroid is normal. But she had a little bit of low vitamin D. So the primary care gave, gave her 2,000 units of vitamin D. Um, she did have a history of Epstein-Barr virus and as a teenager. But in the last few months, she's been experiencing a lot of aggravation of these upper respiratory tract infections. And she had to take multiple antibiotics over the last six months for that. And then her fatigue got much worse. So when, when I took her history, I realized that she's not sleeping well and she has a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms. So we began addressing those root cause of her fatigue. We talked about stress at work. She's working uh, at least 60 hours a day, a week, I'm sorry, a week, which is totally inhumane. She comes home, she has to take care of the family children, even though she has some support, but of course she needs to spend some time with her kids and she's exhausted. She doesn't have time to even, you know, play with them um, because of, because of the burden from work. So we did talk about stress. We evaluated her gut. 
We looked at the nutritional deficiencies. We talked about sleep, how she sleeps, and which wasn't really ideal. And we started implementing those steps of the changes, steps of changes one at a time uh, with the health coach. And as a result, with this just lifestyle-based uh, improvements and stress reduction technique that we do in the office, which is heart math, uh, amazing, uh, great biofeedback system that helps people to calm down their nervous system and bring it all to the balance and result resolution of some other root cause problems. In her case, uh, she really uh, made a dramatic improvement in the energy production and she started waking up well rested. Uh, she Her resilience to stress became significantly better. She uh, uh, she basically started outlining a healthier boundaries at her job, asking to, you know, give her some support, some assistance, which she received. So she delegated a lot of her work. She didn't have to do all it by herself. And as a result, she definitely felt much more empowered and improved her energy production. So in our office, we do this SOS stress recovery program to help people to um, get their life back and get their energy in place and regain the joy at their jobs. So evaluation, we do a very detailed evaluation with their 59 questions questionnaire so that I review before I meet the patient. As I said, I by the time I review this questionnaire, I probably know more about my client than their parents. Um, then we're ordering some tests. Some of them are very conventional, like checking basic labs, but sometimes we're really looking deeper. We're looking at the food sensitivity, nutritional deficiencies. We're looking at their uh, other factors like toxic metals, if their the history points to the exposure to pollutants. Um, we I prescribe some supplements and lifestyle interventions. Uh, patients usually get some homework to do, and they uh, they work with the health coach either on one on one or in our group meetings that are uh, scheduled monthly. And then we meet again to talk about uh, test results and interventions that and the result we evaluate the results that they can obtain uh, after implementing the initial steps of the treatment plan. And again, group visits are great. Uh, they're very affordable, and it helps people a lot. And patients actually learn from each other on those. So where do you go from there? So I strongly advise for all of you to take a snapshot of this barcode and take this stress recovery survey to see where are you in this in your health journey. Are you um, Is the stress and burnout a big risk factor for you or no? Uh, and if you can take a snapshot of that, it's fine. We, as a participants, you will receive their post-program email with this questionnaire, so you can fill it out and see for yourself how your results are. Um, also, if you're interested to learn more about our practice, please schedule the discovery call. I know it's the end of the year, but we still have a couple of uh, openings uh, for in December, and. If you're interested, become a part of our community on Instagram and Facebook. You can see a lot of announcements about our uh, group coaching and about other events that we run for the, our patients and for people outside of our practice. Uh, if you're interested, look more for, you, know, you can check our videos on the YouTube channel or just visit my website and sign up for the newsletter that we uh, send to our patients uh, with information. And uh, this is their products that I would strongly recommend for everyone to consider. Uh, if you're dealing with the fatigue, if you're dealing with their uh, lower resilience, this is a great product to start with. Your most comprehensive B complex, um, your magnesium that helps you to unwind and relax at night, and fabulous greens that are great. Um, Great addition to your uh, supplement routine. Uh, you know, all of us are probably lacking uh, the amount of the good, healthy fruit and vegetables, and especially clean 
fruit and vegetables. Uh, people are basically food depleted because even if they eat well, but they don't eat organic, they eat uh, GMO, uh, genetically modified uh, food, we, that creates more depletion in our body. So these fabulous greens are all organic source of their most essential nutrients. And one scoop a day, just mixed in the water. If you if you can drink that as a part of your daily routine, will give you a dramatic amount of antioxidants and um, alkalinizing uh, nutrients that are so important for our body. So just to remind you, we have our we open our IV suite. So feel free to sign up and. For those who are our patients and never experienced it for the first time, we give a very uh, great uh, reduced price so you can experience and notice how you feel uh, after that. So just call and schedule. We do have some other um, modalities, therapeutic modalities, like this pulse electromagnetic field therapy called On Demand that is diagnostic as well as the therapeutic uh, intervention that we recommend for some of our patients is basically using the energy of this device to stimulate and and support and nurture the organs uh, of your body. So that that is a, a great therapeutic intervention. And um, yeah, and join our um, group coaching that is taking place on December nineteenth. And where you can talk specifically about fatigue and burnout and the community, it's a very nice and safe place where you can ask questions, not only about your therapeutic plan, but also something that bothers you or and, and get the answer from our qualified health coaches, but also from from other people who might have experienced the same issues and found a great answer. So that becomes really a fun place to to be. So heart math that I mentioned is their great way to handle stress and teaches you how you can uh, get yourself in their state of their um, most balanced um, confidence and peacefulness and joyfulness and gives you this just balanced state at, at your fingertips. You don't need to take pills. You don't need to take supplements. You just bring yourself there with this amazing tool that we teach our patients. So uh, check out uh, these sessions. I think we're going to start doing it again in January because December is so busy for everyone. So we decided to not to burden people with any additional training. But if you have a plan to improve your health in 2024, this is a great start to learn this tool and implement it in, 20, in the new year. We also uh, pay a serious attention to genetics. So we implement genetic testing as well as interpretation of the genetic testing uh, is uh, free of charge by joining this group. So, so what's your next step? If you are new to our practice, feel free to schedule a discovery call with my team. They will help you to understand how you can become a patient uh, and maybe answer some other questions. We also run this live Q&A sessions on a monthly basis. Some of them will be thematic and some of them will be uh, just to ask me anything kind of a, a half an hour time. So please sign up to our newsletter and keep an eye on the announcements. If you have a specific question, you can always join this live event and talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. 